So good morning, everyone. Uh, as I think was just explained, my name is Joran Janssen, um, and I'm going to tell a bit more on, uh, on why and how to upgrade to Java 17. Uh, shortly, the agenda on what we will cover in this session. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me or contact me later. Um, I also created a GitHub page where this session basically is based upon. Uh, so if you want to um, retrieve any of the links that I show or any of the, the examples that I show, you can also look at the, the GitHub page. Uh, I can quickly get the overview. So this GitHub page is sort of a manual on uh, how to upgrade. And it also, for instance, shows like uh, what things are changed and what errors that you might get and how to resolve them. So if you actually start with the upgrade, uh, then this GitHub uh, project might be interesting to you. Um, so please feel free to, to ask me any uh, questions. Uh, so a little bit of background. Um, I didn't get all this experience from, uh, from Googling. Uh, I'm actually uh, doing Java upgrades for, for a long time, uh, for instance, from 8 to, to 11, and now uh, we actually already migrated some projects to 17. Uh, so I'm doing this for already for quite some years, uh, but still with a lot of help from Google now and then when uh, I get strange errors and I, I don't know what's happening. Um, so, so why would you actually upgrade uh, your Java application? Uh, there, there are many good reasons to do that. Uh, not only to upgrade major versions, but even if you do minor upgrades, you might have some of these benefits already. So make sure that you have an up-to-date version uh, and benefit from all these things. Uh, so you get things like performance improvements, security fixes, but also still support, new minor versions coming up. Uh, and I think for us developers, the most interesting part, of course, is the new features that Java uh, releases, uh, like pattern matching and records for the, the latest Java versions. Uh, and I think nowadays, now it's uh, developers are in high demand. A lot of companies try to uh, attract developers. Um, it might help if a company can offer a working environment with an up-to-date Java environment instead of that you still work on Java 7, 8, or some of those really old versions. Um, and to give an example for performance improvements, uh, this diagram shows uh, in purple uh, Java 17, uh, in blue, uh, Java 16 and in yellow, even uh, Java 18. So this compares how quickly uh, the garbage collector is. So you see that there is quite a bit of a difference in there. Um, uh, uh, sorry, not only it shows how quickly it is, it shows the committed size of the heap. Um, so you can see it makes more efficient use of the RAM. So there are some actually concrete examples on how new versions of Java are actually performing better or using less resources to run your application. Um, there are also some reasons why you might not want to upgrade. It still is a bit of work. Uh, I will talk about later uh, that it is, I guess, a little, a little less work than you expect. Uh, but still, you have to update your local machine, things like your built environment, um, your production environment, and all those environments. Uh, often it uh, involves upgrading some of your uh, libraries. Um, I've heard a lot of people who were a bit afraid to upgrade to Java 9 or later because the module system or jigsaw uh, is present in that one. And a lot of people think that they need to modularize their application, which is actually not true. It's perfectly fine uh, to not use modules explicitly in your application. Uh, you can just run the application. It's a feature you can use, but you're not forced to use it. So if you don't want to, feel free to skip that. And I think that's what uh, most of the people are doing. I think like 95% of all the projects uh, aren't using modules at this point in time. Uh, whether that's good or bad is probably another discussion. Um, another reason why it might be hard to upgrade is if you create a Java application, which is run on customer side, on maybe a bit older computers with older software installed on it and older Java versions. And actually there is a feature to uh, a little bit work around that. And that's the called the multi-release jar uh, feature, which is already present in Java for, for quite a while, but relatively unknown. So that's why I quickly want to show that. Uh, so how does it work? We have our normal uh, Java source code. So in this case, it's application and student. And then we have another package with a newer version of Java. So in this case, uh, Java 17, but, and let's, quickly look at it from uh, an IDE because that's probably easier. Uh, so we have uh, the normal uh, application class, uh, which simply prints some information such as uh, 
which Java version is being used and some implementation details. And then I have a student class, which is yeah, just a, a, an old Java class with a first name in it. Um, it contains a blank name a method to check if uh, the name contains any blanks and it returns some info in this case that it's a Java class. And then we have Java 17 uh, packages uh, with more or less the same student, but this time it's a record and the is blank name uh, method is implemented by uh, using the is blank method uh, in string, which was recently added in one of the newer Java versions. And we return that it's a Java record. So this basically uh, has two versions of Java inside um, one code base, one for Java 17 and one for older versions of Java. You need a little bit of configuration for that, of course. Uh, in the case of Maven, uh, we configure that the base should be compiled with Java 8. And we also, also want to compile some parts with Java 17, and that's the stuff that's in the Java 17 directory, so in this directory. Then I created a Docker file. And uh, even if you're not familiar with, uh, with Docker, what this does basically is it will first build it on uh, Java 17. It will create a jar file. And basically um, from there on, uh, I can run the Java application. Uh, the jar file, which is created here, will then be copied to this phase. Uh, and actually here we will run the same jar file on Java 8. And then we will do the same on Java 11. So let's quickly see how that goes. is Let's see what the, what the first one is. So we can see here it's being built on Java 17 and then run on Java 17. And we can see that the Java record uh, is being used here and some extra information. Then on Java 8, we can see that the Java class is being used. And on Java 11, we can see that still the Java class is being used. So what happens is that only on Java 17 or newer, uh, the Java 17 code base is being used, and on all the older versions, um, uh, basically the older code base is still being used. So that might be helpful this way. You can make sure that uh, you have one jar file um, with maybe some performance benefits because you can use new APIs of Java for Java 17. So customers on Java 17 can benefit from those performance improvements. Uh, but customers who are not yet on Java 17 can still use the same jar file uh, just the application might be a little bit slower, but that's a good reason for them to upgrade to Java 17. Um, make sure that, uh, in my case, student, um, in your case, uh, you might have other classes in here, uh, and they should all have the same public API, so the same public methods, because else you might get runtime errors. Um, it's not automatically enforced by build tools. However, for instance, IntelliJ gives a warning, and otherwise you can validate it with the latest version of Java. Um, you already saw that I, I showed uh, Docker. Um, I think Docker is, is relatively easy to try out things like this uh, and run stuff on, on different versions of Java. And also the examples uh, in my GitHub repository are, are used with Docker um, because it's yeah, simply relatively easy to show things in, uh, in it. Um, so why this session? Uh, I, I had a lot of discussions already for years on, on upgrading uh, Java. Often it's a bit of a challenge uh, the business isn't really eager to update Java because it's sometimes a bit vague what actually are the performance benefits. Uh, there are other priorities. Uh, While well, developers, they would like to, to upgrade and make use of the new versions of Java. Um, what I noticed is that it's often seen as, as quite a challenge or it's really unclear how much work it is. Um, and I, it's still unclear for me sometimes, so it's hard to predict how much work an upgrade will be. It highly depends on what kind of dependencies you have. If you, for instance, have uh, Spring Boot, it automatically manages your dependencies. So if you move to one of the newest versions of Spring Boot, it will relatively easy run on a new version of Java. Uh, if you have a lot of dependencies or are relatively old, it might be quite a challenge because uh, when upgrading Java, we will see that upgrading dependencies is a large part of the task. Um, however, uh, I, I, I had some estimations from teams who estimated that it would take weeks to months to upgrade from Java 11 to 17. I think those estimates are a bit on the high side. Um, 
I actually managed to do that upgrade in, in a couple of days, partly due to my experience, but also because, yeah, you simply need to get started. Uh, and I think it's a nice task to, for instance, do on a Friday afternoon, where maybe your hours are nearly gone or already gone, um, and quickly check how it's doing on a new version of Java. And then you can tell uh, your employer a bit better on what needs to be fixed. Um, so there are some various tricks to uh, basically get started and uh, figure out what actually goes wrong instead of just debating like how much work it might be because it's really hard to predict that. Uh, so it can be a challenge, but uh, I hope to um, help with that. So there are a lot of challenges that are recurring. So that happen in, in a lot of projects or maybe in all the projects. Um, and I try to put them all in this uh, presentation so that you can fix those easily and then focus on challenges that are maybe specific for your application. And so let's get on that journey. Um, but lately there was uh, quite some discussion on uh, Java and the, the release cycle. Uh, before we had a new version of Java every three or four years, so we wouldn't upgrade in those periods, uh, only some minor updates maybe. Uh, nowadays there is an LTS coming out every three years and there are even some versions coming out in between those LTS versions. Uh, so every six months there will be a new release. In the future, LTS versions will even be released every two years. Uh, so now maybe the big question is like, what will I do? Will I use all the latest versions of Java? So uh, after 17, we will get 18 or will I stay on the latest LTS version, the long-term support version. Um, and, and there are some things to consider there. So a long-term support version receives minor updates or minor versions of Java for quite a long period of time, where the normal versions like 12 until 16, who are not LTS, um, in general only receive updates for half a year. It depends a bit on your vendor. So some vendors offer longer periods of updates, uh, but most of them only offer it for half a year. So if you want to stay on the latest major version of Java, you have to update regularly to still uh, receive support. Um, if you're unable to do that, it might be better to stay on, uh, on an LTS version. Um, however, then it might be more work to jump from one LTS to the, to the other. So there are some pros and cons on it. We decided for now to stay on LTS versions, but if Java 18 or 19 might bring really cool features, we might revise that decision uh, and simply use the latest version of Java. Uh, so it, it depends a bit on, on what you want. So if we upgrade, how does your application look like? In general, you have some application code, some dependencies, and it all runs on Java. Uh, if something is removed from Java, uh, you have to do something either in your dependencies, in your application code, or maybe even in both. And then it pays off. As sometimes people say, a lazy developer is a good developer. It's true in this case as well. So if Java is upgraded, sometimes your dependencies need to be upgraded as well. And then if you simply wait for a couple of weeks, uh, or sometimes even days, or sometimes they even fix it up front, then you can use the latest versions of your dependencies and they already run on the latest version of Java, and you don't have to uh, do anything for that, except for upgrading and making sure your code still works. Um, if we talk about stuff that's being deleted from the JDK, often it's not deleted at once. Um, they use a deprecation mechanism. So for instance, if you look at Jugs B, uh, it was a normal feature up until Java 8. After that, it was deprecated. So you basically got a nice warning. And in Java 11, the feature was removed. So if you had nicely, uh, changed your code in Java 9 because you already got the warnings. And by the time uh, JugsB is removed in Java 11, you don't have any issues because you already resolved them. Uh, so what can be removed? That can be really anything from really small things like methods uh, up until complete applications uh, such as uh, Java Mission Control, which we will see later. Um, if, if you want to have like detailed information on, on what's being added or removed, uh, you can have a look, for instance, at the Java Almanac. Um, it shows for all the classes which methods and things are being deprecated, removed, or added. So there is a lot of detailed information uh, available here. It's not mandatory to, to read through all of this before you start upgrading. It's more like a reference where you can uh, have a look if, if something fails. You can see if the method um, that no longer compiles is maybe removed or 
uh, if there is uh, an alternative available for it. Uh, there is some more um, information uh, available. Um, maybe simply show that in a browser. Uh, so we, we already saw the Java Almanac. There is also the FUJ alternative for it, which has the same content basically, but a little bit different look and feel. So uh, depending on your preference, you might use uh, one or the other. Then we have the, the OpenJDK website, which for every version of Java uh, shows which uh, Java enhancement proposals or JEPs with uh, all the nice numbers are being added. So this is more the features on a, on a higher level. You won't see methods being removed or stuff like that in here. Um, we have the release notes from Oracle, which contains a lot of information and also things like what's being removed, which certificates are being removed and stuff like that. And nowadays Oracle also offers uh, a getting started uh, manual on how you can actually do the migration to a newer version of Java. So this contains even more information. Uh, but again, I mean, you don't need to read everything up front. Uh, I think it will be quite boring to, to read and try to memorize everything. Um, and so basically use these things as a reference once you encounter some issues or uh, the migration guide might be helpful to get started as well. Uh, but uh, don't try to read everything at once. And so if we want to upgrade our version of Java, uh, you probably want to have two JDKs running at once, uh, one to still maintain your current application and one to upgrade that application to the latest version of Java. And there are a few alternatives to, to do that basically. Um, and so you could use Docker, what I already said. Um, even if you don't know Docker, it's relatively easy. You specify which uh, base image you want to use, you add your project and you run, in my case, uh, Maven, but of course with Gradle and other build tools that it works as well. Um, and then you execute the command to build this. Um, in this case, Docker build minus T, I give it a name, Java upgrade, and then I specify the dot. Uh, the dot specifies the context. In this case, the current directory, that's why we use the dot. So you have to use the dot. It's a common mistake for people who start. They remove the dot because they think it's the end of the line. It's not true in this case. Um, and so with Docker, you can easily try and build stuff. Uh, however, if you really upgrade your own application, I would advise to um, make sure you have Java running the newest version on your laptop uh, because the feedback cycle is a quick, lot quicker than with, uh, with Docker where you first have to build and run everything. Um, but sometimes you encounter really strange issues. I had it once where uh, the application didn't run on Java 17. I had no clue what went wrong. Uh, error message weren't really descriptive. Then I ran it in a Docker image, found out uh, that um, it worked within Docker. Um, and then the conclusion was that it was actually an issue with the application running on Windows. Uh, I have Windows on my laptop and the application didn't run properly because of that. Uh, so it wasn't a a Java 17 issue, but uh, an issue with my laptop. If we roll out a new version of Java, uh, in general, this is probably the, the easiest way to get started with your laptop or local machine and the build and then the deploy environments. Sometimes I directly do upgrades on the build environment, for instance, change the version of Java so I don't have to set up the entire project locally as I support a lot of teams. Uh, but in general, if it's your application, if you just work on a couple of applications in your team, start with the local machine that's by far the easiest uh, on the built environment. It's a bit uh, more of a hassle, but it can give a quick indication about what's going wrong uh, when you change the to the latest version of Java uh, without having to fiddle around on your local machine. If you upgrade, you can upgrade from a really old version to a really new version at once. I mean, I have, I've heard people still running on Java 8 or even 7 or even older. You can try to upgrade at once to Java 17, but it might be a challenge if you encounter any issues uh, because you might not know which version of Java caused those issues. And knowing which version caused the issues is especially helpful when you Google for it because then you can say uh, the issue you have plus the version of Java. So it might be helpful to make a bit smaller steps. So for instance, from eight to 11, and then from 11 to 17, it's not mandatory. You can do both. So you might try to do it at once. And if you encounter strange issues, which you can't resolve, then you might still do uh, the step in between. So for the ingredients, um, make sure your IDE supports the latest version of Java. 
Also make sure that things like the compiler plugin and then other plugins that you use are up to date. Uh, especially uh, I noticed with Maven, uh, else you might uh, have some issues that stuff is still being run on old versions of Java or that some of the plugins aren't compatible with the latest version of Java. Um, if we look at Maven, we can easily specify the release version, in this case, uh, Java 17, and then we're good to go. Um, and like I mentioned, upgrading dependencies for me is uh, one of the important things while upgrading Java. Um, you can leave them on an old version, but then if you upgrade to the latest version of Java, probably some of the dependencies will no longer work and you need to upgrade them uh, anyhow. Uh, so you can also opt to make sure that your dependencies are all, always up to date. Then when you do a Java upgrade, it's relatively easy. Uh, so try to make sure dependencies are updated on the current version of Java and upgrade to the latest version of Java. Um, and that's a breeze basically. Um, but keep in mind, some dependencies, they get new names, uh, like we will see later. Um, if those names change, you not only have to use the latest version of the dependency, but also the new name for the dependency. And to upgrade dependencies, there are various ways. There are plugins available to check if there are newer versions of the dependencies available. Uh, you also have tools like Renovate to automatically create pull requests for all the latest versions of your dependencies. So there, there are a lot of uh, options to choose from. Um, so sometimes the package name actually changes. For instance, Java EE, before it was part of Oracle, now it's part of the Eclipse Foundation and it's called Jakarta and they renamed all the artifacts. So it's no longer Java X, blah, blah, blah. It's Jakarta, blah, blah, blah. So a new name uh, and not all the tools that uh, I just showed will automatically find that new name because they simply look for the latest version of the uh, original name. However, again, there are some options available. The old group IDs are larger plugins from Maven and Gradle can even help you with, with those cases. Then, how do we proceed with the actual upgrade? I always uh, recommend doing it step by step. So not try to uh, get parts of your application completely running at once, but start with simple compiling everything, then running the unit test and packaging the application. It helps because then you can actually say like, ah, I've got this done, I, I need to do that. So I'm, I'm almost there. Instead of having to say like, yeah, I have 80% done because we all know that 80% was the easy part, and then the last 20% takes 80% of the time. And if everything works, we get a really nice pizza. But let's look at what we actually have to change. So in Java 11, Java VEX was being removed, and then you have a couple of options if you still want to use Java VEX. You can use the separate build provided by Gluon, but you can also use uh, some JDKs. So the interesting thing is Java VEX is being removed from the uh, specification, but there are actually some vendors who create JDKs that still contain uh, OpenJFX. Uh, so for instance, the Liberica full JDK and the OJDK build, they still contain it. So you can use that JDK and uh, still keep on running uh, Java 11 if you want. Uh, or use uh, the Maven dependencies who are nowadays also available. Uh, one thing else which was being removed are the JDK fonts. Um, so for instance, if you use things like Apache Poi, which works with uh, Office documents, uh, it uses some fonts. And previously, uh, the JDK contained a really small set of fonts which could be used by those uh, applications. However, in, in uh, Java 11, they removed those fonts, so they are no longer present. And then the JDK will have to retrieve the fonts from the operating system. And if you have a really small operating system, such as Alpine Linux, it doesn't contain any fonts, so you have to manually add them uh, to the operating system, and then it still works. And Java Mission Control was being removed. Uh, Java Mission Control, for the people who don't know it, uh, can be used for uh, profiling and monitoring the application. It's a really cool tool. Uh, so if you haven't looked into it, uh, I can highly recommend it. Uh, but you have to download it separately now. You can download it from various vendors instead of it being present in the JDK. Biggest change, I think, in Java 11 is the removal of Java EE and the Corba modules, because a lot of people were actually using the Java EE modules I don't hope the Corbo modules uh, in their code base. Um, so for instance, uh, again, JugsB has been uh, removed and the newest version uh, is now called Jakarta. So if you want to uh, use that, you need to change your import statements and you need to add the necessary dependencies. 
And so here, there's a lot of information in this slide. Most important is in the left and the right column. Uh, so on the left, you can see which modules have been removed. And on the right, you can see uh, which dependencies you can use as an alternative. If you don't want to rename everything, all your imports and things like that, uh, you can also use the, uh, the older artifacts, which are still uh, from Java EE, so not with Jakarta, uh, but then you have not yet the latest versions available. Question is how much it uh, matters because there haven't been uh, really big changes yet in Jakarta. Uh, if you look at Java 15, one of the bigger changes there was that the National JavaScript engine was being removed. Um, uh, while I saw it a lot in the past at conferences, uh, before I never saw it in projects, but when I actually upgraded some applications to Java 17 in our company, uh, I got the error that uh, it could no longer run a Nashorn. So we were actually using this within our company. So I can expect uh, that you might also uh, see it in your projects, uh, but simply add the dependency and you're good to go again. Um, then Java 16 and newer, um, the biggest theme I think is uh, the encapsulation of the JDK internal. So what does that mean? Um, the JDK has some low level methods in it, uh, which you could use in the past because Java didn't have uh, a real mechanism to, to hide those internals. Um, in Java 9, they introduced the module system. So they were able to, to hide the internals, but they still opted to uh, provide those internals directly for, for us to use because else a lot of applications would break who were already using those internals. Uh, however, along the road, uh, they wanted to make sure that people no longer use those internals so that they could refactor them easily or maybe even completely remove them. So they introduced higher level APIs, which you could use. Um, and nowadays they try to encourage you to make use of that. And so with Java 16, um, you either have to upgrade your dependencies. So for instance, one of the examples that broke was uh, Lombok. It broke on Java 16 use the newest version of Lombok and it still uh, runs on Java 16, they have resolved uh, the issues. Or what you can do is a workaround and you can specify some compiler arguments and you can still open up uh, the internals of Java to your application. So here I opened up basically everything uh, so I could still use it. Or I can use one argument when starting Java the minus minus illegal access uh, argument, and then I can also still use it. But of course, it, it feels really ugly. Uh, um, it feels ugly because basically somebody put a lock on the door, you remove it and st it'll still uh, walk in. It, it feels like something you shouldn't do. Um, and you might encounter these errors if you still do that uh, and you haven't enabled them. And so you will see things like cannot access class because does not export to a named module with a lot of information in between. If you see this, uh, you can either fix it or use one of the workarounds I showed before, but please just fix it because as we will see, it will get harder and harder to keep using these internals and eventually it might even not be possible anymore um, if the Java developers decide that in the future. If you look at Java 17, um, Applet API has been uh, deprecated. Uh, I, I hope you're not using applets anymore because browsers already stopped supporting them a long time ago, but I heard some companies are still using them. Um, you can still use it as it's deprecated, but uh, it might be removed in one of the future releases of Java. Then they removed the AOT and JIT compiler uh, experimental versions. Uh, if you st still want to experiment with stuff like that, um, they advise you to have a look at Qual VM, uh, which does more or less the same things. Now we again see that uh, there have been some changes on the encapsulation of the JDK internals, which I will cover in a second. And the security manager is also deprecated for removal in the future. So what changed with the internals? We can no longer use the minus minus illegal access modifier when we start Java. Um, so that feature is gone now. Like I said, it will be harder and harder to use those internals. Uh, so again, upgrade your dependencies uh, use the new higher level APIs that are available. And if you really don't want to do that, there is still the last resort uh, using the minus minus add opens, for instance, for the Surefire plugin or for your compiler, you can still open things up. But like mentioned, really recommend to make sure that you don't do that anymore and uh, 
fix your code base. And to be honest, I mean, when I, I did the upgrade for a couple of projects, uh, what I mainly encountered was um, frameworks like Mokito or other Java test frameworks uh, who used the internals. When I upgraded those frameworks, um, it was all fixed. I only had one case where um, one of my colleagues had written a unit test which used uh, internals of the JDK, but I could rewrite that unit test quite easily without using those internals, and then it was still good to go. But that was the only case where I really needed to um, refactor a part of the code base. For the rest, it was simply making sure my dependencies were up to date. Um, yeah, so with updating, um, to give some examples, for instance, Mokito, uh, when you have um, a test um, value in an enum, which contains uh, a string, or sorry, a method, in this case, it, it returns a string, um, and, and we inject this mock, then what we will see in uh, the older versions of Mokito is that we will get an exception, and this is actually fixed in the newest version of Java. I filed this issue with Mokito and they, they quickly fixed it. But this again shows that you have to make sure that you're on uh, the latest versions of your dependencies and then upgrading Java will be a breeze, else you might encounter issues and have to upgrade your dependencies one by one. Uh, if you look at Kotlin, uh, I encountered that they um, didn't support Java 17 as a JVM target uh, yet. I don't know if they fixed it uh, by now, uh, but I could simply basically uh, set Java 16 and then it would be compiled to Java 16 and it would work uh, anyhow. Uh, so those are things that you have to take into account. Some frameworks are quicker in upgrading uh, and supporting newer versions of Java, often already supporting early access versions of, of Java, and others, they take a bit more time to upgrade. For instance, Gradle, Gradle is a bit more tied into uh, the Java um, version. So Gradle for quite a long time didn't support Java 17, while Maven already supported it for, for a really long time. Uh, but I think they now have released or are almost releasing a version of, of Gradle, which is compatible officially with uh, Java 17. Um, so be aware of that. If you want to try early access versions or stuff like that, then Gradle might not be uh, the best option. Um, then one error which, which I regularly encountered was unsupported class file major version. And then in this case, version 61. I got it in many places. So I got it, for instance, with uh, Jacoco. I got it with PyTest plugins, with Spring Boot plugins. And then like I was like, yeah, what's class file major version 61? And luckily I had Google, my best friend. Uh, and when I Googled for it, I noticed that class file major version 61 basically uh, is the class file for Java 17. So the error basically means like, oh, this isn't compatible with Java 17. You have to use a newer version. So for instance, class file major version 60 was used for Java 16. So this is an error basically saying, make sure your stuff runs on the newest version of Java. And then we're basically there. We've upgraded everything. Um, it, it might be a bit of a challenge, but I think it's still doable. And then uh, we can be happy um, and, and finally start using all those cool new features of Java. Uh, like pattern matching, like records and things like that. And uh, if you're working on those upgrades and, and you encounter strange issues, like I already mentioned, feel free to have a look at uh, the repository uh, and maybe even use the examples in here. So I, for instance, added to the Mokito example, which is broken on Java 17. Uh, and I added the fix as well, which in this case was relatively easy. The broken one has an old version of Mokito and the fixed one, as a newer version of Mokito. And what I can do here is I can easily run those examples. Uh, so let's first run it on Java 16. Uh, so you see the command here is a bit more difficult, which I use for Docker, but that's mainly to make sure that some caching works because else it will download uh, everything from Maven Central every time, and you have to wait a long time uh, when I demo it. Uh, but if you do it yourself, feel free to use the standard Docker command. Uh, it just might take a little bit uh, longer if you run it a couple of times. And so we see here that uh, basically um, everything is being run 
And we see that everything still passes on uh, Java 16 because on Java 16, uh, the internals weren't hidden yet and Mokito still worked perfectly on it. So if we switch this to Java 17, uh, we're gonna have to wait a little bit, uh, but this way you can easily see if things are working on one version or the other um, uh, without everything that you maybe have customized on your local laptop. Uh, so you make sure you have a clean environment which, which runs it. So it might be beneficial in some cases. And uh, yeah, I'm just a fan of Docker. Uh, makes it easy also to, if you encounter issues, to provide an example for the maintainers of a package uh, to show them like, hey, it fails. This is the example how you can run it. Uh, and we will see here that indeed um, the broken one fails on Java 17 and the fixed one it succeeds because it has the latest version of Mokito available. Uh, let's back to the slides. So uh, basically to summarize amount of work, I think it depends a little bit. Uh, in my experience, upgrading from eight to 11 is a bit more work to, than from 11 to uh, 17, um, mainly because you have to add some dependencies often for, for the Java EE stuff. Uh, and you might have to change some imports if you want to use the Jakarta version of it. Um, well, from 11 to 17, if you upgrade all your dependencies, then in general, your application runs at once. I think, uh, like I mentioned, I refactored one uh, unit test, but for the rest, I, I mainly updated dependencies uh, to the latest version to get that up and running. So if you already have your dependencies up to date, upgrading Java is relatively easy. If you haven't done that, then making sure everything compiles uh, and builds again uh, will probably take you like, yeah, one or two days or something like that per uh, project. Um, again, depends on how many dependencies and things you have. And those one or two days is often spent on builds, waiting for a build to finish. So you might actually do some useful work in between or drink some more coffee. Um, again, like I mentioned, try to do it incremental so you can uh, um, convince everyone how far you are and uh, people get more encouraged and it's good for your own confidence as well. If you make some steps, instead of having to say, I'm nearly done. Um, and one thing I often hear is that people say that people, developers say like, hey, I cannot upgrade because my company doesn't give me the time to upgrade. Um, yeah, make sure that your company knows what the benefits are of upgrading and also how much time it takes. And don't tell your company like, yeah, it might take a month or it might take two months because then you will never get the time for it. And sometimes it also is a matter of taking your own responsibility. I mean, who benefits most from a new version of Java? It's probably us developers because we can make use of all those cool new features. So what I did in the past as well is simply upgraded partly in my free time. Uh, so I got a good idea on what still needed to be upgraded and maybe do part of it during working hours again. Um, and that way I made sure that we actually upgraded without having lots of discussions about how much work it would be. Because I also noticed that in, in a lot of companies, there, are, there is a lot of discussion for days. You need to convince everybody, write a lot of documents about the advantages of a new version of Java, which takes a lot of time. And in that same period of time, I could actually do the upgrade. Um, and so sometimes I even, instead of doing the discussions, I simply say, okay, I will do the upgrade and then it's done. But I'm nowadays a bit more lucky that I get the time to do it uh, from my manager. Uh, but before the, I was in a different position, like I think most of us where it's a bit more of a discussion, but uh, basically really make sure that you start upgrading. Uh, it's not that much of, of a challenge, especially if your dependencies are up to date. So that was it. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please uh, shout or uh, contact me uh, later. Uh, and say thanks for having me and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>